things in the universe are as pretty as Robert Whittaker's striking. Maybe the moon, but only when it's on a lower level. I'm Cage Warriors lightweight champion and full-time MMA coach George Hardwick, and today we'll be breaking down the mitt work of Bobby Knuckles. This is before UFC 243. UFC 308 this weekend, he's fighting Hamzat Shemaev. So we'll look at some of his habits and how we might play into this, into the fight on the weekend. Using that jab, really dipping his weight onto his lead leg to make that... Uh, path for the right straight. See how he dips his weight really far over his lead side so he can dart off and throw his right straight. He did a little switch stance one a moment ago. Generally, this guy's orthodox most of the time, but he will switch into southpaw to cover extra distance. You need a really good confidence in your wrestling defense to do that because you do square your hips momentarily. And if someone ducks under at that time, they can get the takedown on you. So you really need to have confidence on your takedown defense. I wonder if he will use this against Hamzat Shemaev that much because Hamzat is going to be looking to duck under. Uh, here he's using the jab. Up jab a lot of times. Up jab is very difficult to defend. It can be very difficult to parry because you end up reaching too far down to parry it and open yourself up for the right hand, which what which is what Whitaker does. There, this is a bit a bit reminiscent of Ricardo Lopez. That one two, letting that leg drag through to cover a bit of extra distance, and then using the right hand. He didn't use a right hand there. He used like a uh, a, a shoulder roll you know his right shoulder gets that really high and up as he ends up southpaw it becomes his lead shoulder so that's his guard jab mixing up the timing on the jabs not very predictable with it see how he sometimes uses that screw jab like he faints his rear shoulder forward and then pumps his jab in it's almost like the same body mechanics as a hook but he's firing it through the middle there's some pivot hooks some hook spins and then putting the lead shoulder up cameraman is zooming well in there's a double jab but it's more like a jab head off to the side, and then punting that through with the lead shoulder. He does he does the corkscrew hook really well. I really, I, I don't enjoy calling it a corkscrew hook when I'm teaching it, because then people do that weird fist rotation that's just unnecessary, and they leave themselves a little bit more open. Their shoulder level goes really down. Unless you're really like opposite stance, going Prince Nassim, covering a lot of distance, catching someone by surprise with it, Conor McGregor style, eh, I don't advise twisting the knuckles over like that. I would advise doing it how Robert Whittaker's doing, where his palm is facing towards the floor. There's a little low level fin into a right straight, and he's using that dart again, and then using the right hook. See, before this, he was training to fight Adesanya, so he was probably accommodating for having to cover a lot more distance uh, when he's training for this fight. I wonder how much he'll want to use this against Hamzat Shemaev, who will be so happy to clinch and shoot for the takedown, even Hamzat moving up a weight class. There he's jabbing. Robert Whitaker fights at a really long distance. It'll be very interesting to see how Hamzat covers that distance, considering Hamzat doesn't really use his lead hand. If you want to cover distance, you generally have to feint and double jab, like Robert Whitaker's doing there, to cover the distance. Double jab right straight. Can't drill that enough. He's adding that little roll out to his right, because you generally expect the left hook to come back. He's using the shifting combination a lot. Darting right straight into right hook. The right hook, as much as being another shot itself, it manages to get his defense back into place, mixing the jab, the one-two, and rolling out, and a big circle out to the side. You see how when he circles out, his padman is being a good padman. He's throwing stuff back. Even in this small matted space, the padman's trying to cut him off and making him move. And when he circles out to his left, you make sure his left hand kind of comes up and his left shoulder comes up to add that extra insurance against the strike. See how he circled off to the left and he kept his left hand up, left shoulder up. When he moves off to his right, he's either doing it with a roll, or if he shifts through, he'll get his right shoulder up. Being aware that if he's moving in that direction, uh, just a hand at the chin isn't going to be enough. He's actually getting his forearm in the way a lot of the time, or his shoulder. That can cover a lot more than just the hand, even in boxing gloves. There's that shifting combination, shifting, dart right straight into right hook again. Ooh, they're just taking a moment here, gets his stance back. Very interesting stance. There's almost a, a mild bit of valgus in his stance, but it's that soft bend in the knees. He's using the passive structures to get a little bit more force production, that stretch shortening cycle, cross hook, and then he's using that after that hook, instead of having to rotate all the way back to his guard, he's just using it as a shoulder roll. He threw the left hook and then just kept the shoulder high as a shoulder roll. A little feints here, giving that false sense of distance, false sense of distance with his upper body, leaning it forward slightly so he can always move back when he needs to. But his weight's like slightly sprung forward, so he can lunge forward with a one-two. If you're going to throw a one-two in the textbook style, you probably want to keep your weight a bit more back. 
the kind of way some you'd see Naoya Inoue step into a one-two. If you're throwing it like a dart, this blitzing karate style one-two right hand that um, Robert Whitaker throws, having yourself lean forward, if you're happy to let that leg fall off the floor, lead in after the right straight and put your full momentum or your body weight behind it, but sacrifice your footing, you know, it's fine to have that slight lean forward. Plus, it gives you that safety net, more distance you can pull back if someone throws a punch or throws a kick. It's low, low arm position, but the elbow position still tight. Sometimes you see this with people who put their arms low, but then their elbows flare out when they actually throw the punches. If you look at Robert Wicker here, if you look at Pereira in his last fight with Khalil Roundtree, even when he puts his hands slightly low, his elbows are still tight. So it's hard to see. It's hard to see if he's going to throw a jab, an uppercut, or a left hook off that side. Makes it less predictable. And when the elbows are close into the body and connected to the body, it actually adds more force because it's connected to the body. Whenever you rotate your hips, your arms are connected to it. When the elbows flare out, you get a lot of disconnection and you end up arm punching, not doing particularly much. There's a double jab cross. He's adding a bit more sting in it, rolling out and getting a big circle out. There he shifts stance. Robert Whitaker rarely goes southpaw. He normally goes southpaw if he's wanting to cover more distance on the back foot or he's wanting to cover more distance on the front foot. So if he's moving forward, he'll be blitzing in with that one-two and allowing himself to shift into southpaw and maybe throwing another right hook or a left kick, something along those lines. If he's using the southpaw to move back, he's generally stepping that left foot out to the side a bit, O'Malley style, and using it to cover more distance. One, two, roll out a lot of that in this in this uh, mitt work session, very hand-focused mitt work session. Sometimes they just want to save the legs and just do hands for the open workout. Obviously, not trying to show too much. It's an open workout. Double jab. See how he's hitting that with a really nice fast rhythm. When he's hitting that double jab, it's not bam, bam. Because there's space between those jabs for the right hand to come in for the other guy to start working. But when he throws that double jab super quick, pop bop, it sets up the right hand a little bit better, throws off the timing, and there's no time for the opponent to throw their right hand, to throw their to throw their shot, because that second jab is knocking them on the chin. It's already interrupting them before they can square up to throw a right hand. Here's some faster, faster almost Mayweather pads going on here. I'd have to really slow mode to break down the particular combinations. But look how, even when he's doing this, a lot of people get this wrong, and they just do the end of the punch uh the end of the punch on longer sequence combinations like that but he was getting his body turning even if you watch Mayweather a lot of the time it's like that that twist and that rotation that he's practicing he's not just sticking his arms out and touching the pads boom, boom looking nice very Mayweather there finishes that double jab after a long sequence finishing with a double jab really good way to interrupt your opponent's counter and it's just a good habit sometimes as well when you throw a combination it's kind of a race. You want to get that hand back to your guard, especially a good combination generally finishes with the left hand. You want to get that hand back to your guard, or if you've squared yourself up to throw a backhand, you want to bring yourself back into your stance. But it's a race against your opponent's counter. Sometimes they're letting that shot land, and they're wanting to take the turn. And As soon as that shot's landed, they're going to try and fire back. So they're waiting to take the turn. But if you finish with a double jab, it can interrupt them, and it can make that shoulder cover your chin. Again, in MMA and in boxing as well, that shoulder often covers a lot more of the chin than your hand ever will. Boom, one, two, dart into right hook. Happy to step across himself. You know, this is something that you get taught out of you when you, you start in MMA, when you start in boxing. Never cross your feet over, but you will see experienced people allow themselves to cross their feet over, but they do it out of range. There's a one, two into left high kick. He's trying to cover a lot of distance. It's interesting to see how the high kicks will play against Hamzat Shemaev because, you know, Hamzat, he stands really tall up. Despite being a wrestler, he stands quite tall up, which is a better stance for defending high kicks. There's a reason you see K1 fighters stood so tall, so erect, like in Masashi Kamura's. There's a one, two high kick. The MMA combination orgasm make Superman punch into high kick or Superman jab into high kick. Very interesting. But it's interesting to see how he's going to try and use the high kicks against against uh, Hamzat Shemaev. Hamzat, big kicker himself. He'd probably be wanting to throw his own kicks against Whitaker. Even if Hamzat's kicks don't land, he, if he can get Whitaker to give up space and move himself more towards the fence, that's better for Hamzat. I don't think Hamzat, 
unless he perfectly times a dart, which Whitaker might not do. I think Whitaker's going to rely more on the lead hand, I would imagine, to keep him at bay and then only throw the right hand when he has a really clear line on it or he's got a really clear angle. I'd imagine Hamza's going to want to throw the kicks, try and navigate him towards the fence. The same way Colby would use kicks. Colby would use kicks. He didn't have really powerful kicks, but when he, he missed, a lot of time the front kicks would make people give up a bit of ground they give up a bit of ground and then suddenly the back's on the fence, which is really where you want them if you're a chain wrestler. So, you know, if you're a GSP, you want those shots in the open. You want them to over lunge on a jab. You want them to overextend and then you'll shoot under them. Whereas if you're more of a chain wrestler like Hamzat, someone happy to shoot and end up on both knees because his wrestling prowess is that good, where he'll just drive up, go single, go high underhook, go into body locks. He might want him more towards the fence. But... We shall see. Sometimes as well, Hamza might want to use that kick to try and bait the counter out of Whitaker, to bait the one-two counter, and then duck under it. That's Hamza's first takedown in the UFC. He kicks, and he does kick very hard. He dropped, dropped Gustafsson and sparring. Another interesting thing we might see in the fight is that Hamza Shemaev has a power right hand, and it's still very powerful when he's southpaw. And we saw Drickus Duplessis use that so well against Robert Whitaker, against Robert Whitaker's dart, because Whitaker will get his head a little bit off the center line uh, when he's firing that one-two against the southpaw. But if you you jab where his head's going to be, it's going to be a lot of power. If you've just got a stiff arm, you make that stiffness on impact, and then they're throwing themselves in the way Whitaker does, it's going to be a good shot. General things we're seeing in the, in the shadow boxing there. If he's spinning himself around in a kick, he's not spinning, stopping, and then just trying to take his time to look up Look wherever. He's still imagining someone's going to press into him. Using that lead hand. And then circling around. So that'll do it for today. If there's anyone you want to see me break down. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe for more breakdowns. Didn't get the arrows out today. Just had a little bit of a ramble. Original video by MMA Fighting. Uh, might get some more UFC 308 related breakdowns. I also have the Patreon. I don't paywall any content anymore. But the people who suggest stuff on Patreon. It's only a dollar, dollar a month. That's probably what I'm going to lean towards. Use code HARD10 at RevGear for a 10% discount. It's HARD10, not HARD8 or HARD12, because that would be even more suggestive. Have a nice day.